Okay, this is a demo of the Merchant's Village consignment software. Um, you can download it from freeconsignmentsoftware.com. Run this little executable. Uh, this is a demo version of the program, it's just a single user demo. Uh, click yes on the license agreement. It's the GPU or the GNU uh, GPL version 3 license. Um, and the first time you run it, it's going to unpack some files. You want to make sure uh, that you don't have anything in the C merchant folder. That's where all the files get unpacked. Um, and the program will run automatically. The first time you have to enter some initial information. Um, if you want to write checks with the, the system, there's a remote check writing uh, uh, facility that let you approve checks even if you're not at your, uh, at your office. You need to put, some, put in some FTP information for that. And uh, every time you see this security screen, this just keeps people from other machines from being able to start uh, any of the system remotely. If you're at the system and trying to run the program, click Allow All. And the default username and password is Merchant. Merchant, both of those. Uh, when the program first starts, there's this option uh, for some notes to be displayed for the users. This lets managers or owners make sure that all the cashiers or uh, sub-managers are, are able to see some employee notes every time they start. You can disable that if you want. Uh, and you can include any text you want here. At Merchants Village, we just put, uh, anytime I needed the, the employees to see something, I would put a date and put a little message, and that can be as long as you want. Now, when the program starts up, it comes to the point of sale screen, the sales screen. I see some tabs up here for our barcodes and other administration features. Um, when the sales screen opens, uh, the cursor is in the barcode area. Um, this is where you hook up a uh, barcode scanner. It can be any CCD scanner. Uh, I've got some labels here. You need to scan the, uh, the items in. That can go, of course, as quickly as, as uh, it does in most uh, retail stores. You scan the items as they come across. Um, and you'll see there's a booth, an item number, and a price. The booth is the consigner. Um, and by default, the system has a couple thousand booth numbers set up without any real information. Um, in the admin panel, you'll see you can look at the uh, these vendors. They're called vendors, but they can be individuals or um, anybody who wants to sell something with you. Um, and you can edit that, that info. There's a little table here. Uh, you can type in um, their contact information, any notes, address, email. Um, in order to save that information, the default admin password uh, is admin. You can change that later. Um, overwrite the existing information. Um, back to that sales screen, you can set up these people. So if we type in, for example, Jane Doe, which was the, one of the original, uh, the only well, default person put in there, we'll come up and that will put their name in. You can type any information here you need. So you can put the booth number or the, the booth name. Um, and just click Add Item. Or if you press Enter, it'll enter those. If you want to delete something, you can delete any selected items. Or if you just want to delete a bunch of items in the beginning, you can do that. So again, delete everything but one. So it's really quick and fast to use. Select the payment type. Um, you can change the order to non-taxable if you want. At Merchants Village, we found it was a lot faster to just separate the orders and uh, at the point of sale, um, put all non-taxable items in a pile and all taxable items. We have this little button here um, where you can add the previous order together. It'll total, uh, of course, there's no previous orders in here, but it will uh, will add the previous order. And we found that that system was, was far and away faster than, than trying to check individual items for t uh, taxable and non-taxable sales. And the reports will take all that into consideration. Uh, just click Save and Print. And you'll notice if you try and enter any information um, in that point of sale that's wrong, it won't let you do it. Um, the receipts pop up. Again, we're just starting here for the first time, so it's a little bit slower. But the receipts pop up. In browser, in your default browser, and you can set which browser you want to use, um, and automatically comes up to, to print. Um, we have a couple simple little browsers that are referenced in the 
in the system that you can use. It'll pop up instantly and, and print out instantly. So this whole process is really fast. But the receipts look like that. They're basically just uh, HTML forms. It has all the information, date, time, salesperson, uh, how it was paid, any of the notes that are typed in, and so on. So for each sale, you enter whatever you need. Again, we can scan some items. If you try and type something in that's not really in the system, if you try and enter a booth number or item that's not in the in the system, it'll tell you when you go to enter it. So you have to fix that. And for the most part, we use numbers. Um, and for example, if you try and enter a booth that's not there, it'll tell you the booth is not correct. So it keeps you from making mistakes. And uh, this is a cash sale. And you can, if you want, you can enter um, customer information in there. I'm not going to print this. This is my default browser here is Chrome, which can be a little slow with the printing. Um, you can run this on, on any operating system. We ran this at Merchants Village in Piston, PA. We sold several million items over the course of about two and a half years. Um, all on Windows machines. This is running right now on a little netbook. We use all netbooks up there, even for the server machine. Uh, you can run this on one computer, and the server and the clients can be all on one machine, or you can just uh, all you do is map a network drive on the server machine, and clients you install the this runs in Rebel Interpreter. You install a little Rebel Interpreter and run uh, uh, run the the link from the the server, and we, we've had uh, regularly as many as six cash re cash registers going with several thousand items being rung up. Um, simultaneously, you know, over the course of a couple of hours, we'd sell thousands of items. Um, Merchants Village was uh, 120,000 square feet, and we we had several thousand customers a week, and this thing ran reliably um, and quickly, um, even when we had the busiest times around Christmas. Um, there's a little barcode entering screen here. To print barcodes, what we usually do the faster method is um, to use this little order order form. The vendors uh, or the booth people, whoever is consigning from you, types in their booth number and their password and an item number. Item numbers can be anything vendors want. Um, many vendors would just label everything item number one and they put prices in um, for the items that they they wanted to sell and all they cared was that things were being sold. They put, sometimes put different prices in to represent different items, price certain things, and keep a, an inventory list of their own. This doesn't add inventory to a system. So if they want to change prices on things, they don't have to change anything in the system. All they do is print out new labels, and, and they're done. Um, there's 30 labels per page, so we always charge the penny per label and uh, uh, charge at least uh, at least uh, 30 cents for a page. Um, when that's done, when that's done, they click the submitted order, and again, we can run this on a network machine. They see their order here, and if we want to add more, basically, this has some uh, uh, provisions to easily enter a lot of different item numbers. So, if you want to go, for example, from number item number 1 to 10 and you want it to skip item numbers like for example 1, 3, 5, 7 you can do this with the price for each of those items and so we just want two of each of those you'll see that those items get entered down here and this can be edited manually item 1, 3, 5, 7, two of each added to the order really easy to add huge volumes of inventory that way and we had uh, vendors with basically no experience doing this within a couple minutes um, they enter their orders or employees enter the orders, however you want your system to work. We always had vendors just do it. Um, you just click print orders, go into your barcodes folder and you see the orders sitting there. Um, click on print and you can adjust anything there if you want. Um, a lot of times vendors wanted to print just a couple labels and they would just save their label paper and can print from a different position on the page so you don't waste any label paper. Use standard la Avery uh, label paper. Um, actually, we use generic every, every label paper, and it prints out to a PDF. Uh, you just print this. You want to make sure when you print it that um, you can use any PDF here. You just want to make sure that you don't uh, do any any page scaling. 
just want to use the actual size and don't auto rotate. Uh, make sure basically that this is just printing as it appears on this page so that everything comes out without any uh, auto sizing that could make the line blur. Um, okay, so you get these and uh, you print those pages out, they put the labels on the items, and you scan with the point of sale system. That's the basic way the, the system works. A number of other features here if you want to see a sales report. So, for example, we just entered some items into uh, booth, booth one, or you can type Jane Doe there, you type the date, select the date, and it'll show you the uh, items that were sold. It tells you here which items were sold, the item number, and this is for booth. Uh, booth one on these dates and times. Um, choose the prices, whether it was tax free, we had tax free on that first order, date and time of each of those item sales, and the uh, um, name of the salesperson. Also, some totals here, including tax totals. Um, so this keeps track of all of the uh, all of the sales tax that the vendors need to pay. Uh, you can do a cashier report. Uh, so right now we're logged in as merchant. Again, click the day, and here you can select the time. So if you want to do a cashier report for any particular time, it will show you what was sold. Um, and this is the, the receipts. Now, if you want to go back and look at any receipts, there's a little reprint sales receipt. So for only for this cashier, you can bring up the uh, items. That way you don't have to go looking through all the sales of all your individual cashiers. brings up the... <coughs> The sales for those people. You can see what they've what they've sold. At the end of the day, we use that to to make sure the right amount of money was in every cash register. Um, you can also search for sales receipts. If you want to look for any sales receipt that has the word Jane in it, for example, or an item number, anything of that sort, item description, you can do that. Clear here. Um, there's also a, a total sales report. These are just a couple of the basic reports that are included right in the in the main uh, main user screen, but there are a variety of options for reports. This will show you everything that was sold on a given day. We have the options set up right now. We want to see how much was cash, how much was credit, and how much was EBT, and then a grand total of all the sales for the day or for the period. If you want to see how much you sold in a week, for example. Um, and then there's also a report here that generates um, all of the all of the sales for all of the vendors that are currently uh, in the system. And I'm going to choose a day. There's this little note that comes up if you want to add some notes for your employees or for whoever's running the checks, the check writing uh, system. It's a good way just to make sure they they keep all these uh, important notes. If you have, for example, certain vendors who um, you know have to have uh, special <coughs> calculations or things written on their checks, you can put the notes there. Um, put the starting check number in, and it will go through and make a report for each of these vendors. Now when you have, Merchants Village had uh, about 700,000 um, receipts in the system. Uh, I uh, left the system running for a long time without deleting any old data, without, you know, um, uh, taking out old data to make it run faster and those reports can take a long time. We usually wrote, ran that the night before. That could take up to an hour with that many re receipts, but you can see it runs quickly if you keep it uh if you keep the the receipts um if you keep the receipts at a, you know, a smaller number. Um and this just gives you a full report for all of the all of the um booths or vendors or consigners that you have. It shows how many total sales were made during that period and how much money you have to pay out, how much tax they have to pay out. And of course there's a, a sub-report for all of these. And in our reports we, we took out a certain amount for credit card fees and you can do that however you want in the system. You just put the logic in you want uh, to, you know, to calculate percentages or flat fees or whatever it is you want. And you'll find that each of those uh, reports is in a in a folder here, so you have a report for every single uh, every single uh, vendor that you have in the system. And there's that complete report that we looked at. These little files are individual reports. Um, 
So that's the big report. And you can just leave those on your system so you have a full history of every report that was ever printed out for any of the vendors. And you can look through each of the individual ones and it shows you which check number was used to, to print. And of course it skips check numbers if there were no sales. Um, so you don't have to waste a check. You see all these that were zeros were just check number 9999 as we entered as the first check. Um, there are a number of levels of, of admin and manager uh, control. You can see, for example, if you want to do this uh, manager stuff, you need to type in by default manager, manager, and that lets you into this final screen here where you can write checks. Now, we don't have, uh, I didn't put in the FTP information, so I have in the, the demo you can write check number one. You're going to get a little error here when it tries to connect to the internet. But this check writing system allows employees or whoever else you want to get into the system to write checks, but they can't print anything until the owner or other responsible party um, actually approves them online. This made check writing and financial operations uh, very versatile. Iraq, or at uh, Merchant's Village. So you write a check here for 50, it'll put the amount in text in, you put the check date, check number that you want to write, and any notes, you can change that default note. When you click on this, it's going to, basically it connects to your website. If you have that set up, it'll connect to your website, and the owner can look at and approve these checks before they ever get printed out. I had my uh, checks automatically signed so that they would, um, you can put your signature in a little, in a little, um, BMP file and it'll a little image file and it'll automatically put that on your checks so you don't even have to be at your uh, we don't have the internet set up here so it's not gonna, not gonna print um, now you can change the uh, uh, the passwords also on this screen you can adjust your bank account balance it automatically calculates when you write a check what your bank account balance is uh, you can change the default check memo um, you can check, I've done this a couple times here, you can, um, now if we publish the approved checks, by default here, let me print one, one check, and you'll, you can view any of the uh, approved checks, and without the, uh, the website set up, you're not going to be able to print any checks, so in the demo you have to go through and actually do that when it first pops up, that first requester, look for your FTP information. But this lets you, for example, you want to add new um, new users. Um, that is my username. And you can remove users. These are for cashiers, basically. You can change the admin password, which is used to control uh, you know, changing item numbers, adding adding vendor information. And the manager uh, password lets you change all that information and also lets you write checks. So, so, Sales tax rates. Here you can also choose which browser, browser or PDF viewer you're using. Um, and there's another screen here where you can search items. So this is another set of reports. If you want to search by an item number um, and a price, it'll show you anything that matches all of those sales. It's great to check, uh, you know, who has sold something and you know, no one has sold anything with those parameters. But you can also for example, check just by a item number if you want to check. I'll check here for all item number one. Done today, and you can see we added all those items that were item number one. This helps you search. There's a little mapping program that lets you click on a an area of the screen. So you say here's your this is your floor map, you know, your floor plan. You want to add a uh, a booth right here. We'll say that's number two sixty two. Now later on, you want to find uh, an item, bring up your map, and say you want to find a booth, 262, and it lights up where that where that item is. That can be helpful for finding things in your store. Um, there's also a whole facility here for tracking rent. So at Merchant's Village, we rented space, and uh, we didn't charge uh, any consignment fees. We just rented space out to vendors. And uh, when they paid us rent, we use this system. Uh, so the check, and for example, let's check number 57. We put in who actually did the receipt. The date was automatically put in. We'd say, for example, rent for September. And then there's a whole reporting system that we can use to uh, calculate who's paid what. And what we did, um, 
we gave one of these to uh, one of these to the vendors, and we kept one so that we always had a receipt, and they always had a receipt of what was paid. Never any questions. Then we signed both of those, both copies. So we both had a signed receipt, uh, and then you can go through and you can look at uh, who's paid when. And if you want to run a report, it'll run, and basically it'll tell you. We have this set up so that uh, if people hadn't paid in more than a month. Um, that it was. Uh, um, there's no errors here, so if it was if they hadn't paid more than a month, we would get a little note here saying due, and it shows the entire history of everything they paid. So if they had uh, 12 payments, you'd see all 12 payments in each of those booth reports. That really quickly let us go through and see who owes who owed money. Um, you can also use the system to to um, scan regular. Uh, regular um, SKUs, you know, just item SKUs that are printed on, on items by default. If you're just running this as a as a, um, a store, if you want to use this for a regular retail store, so you put in $1.99 for example, uh, you put in the actual item that you want to, you know, the item you want to call it, item 123 in your system, and you scan the SKU, and that adds it to the inventory and that way when you scan that SKU on the uh, main screen there it, it just uh, it pops up with the price that you put in. You can add as many items as you need to that. So you have an inventory of your own items that uh, run just with the regular printed SKU on a, on a piece of retail uh, inventory. Um, we use this sometimes we had vendors that wanted to actually put labels. For most of our vendors we used to use numbers. They all chose their numbering system and some vendors for example when they, when they chose this item number they would use for example a specific item number you can have items 1 through 5,000 uh, they'd use they'd, they'd number every single item individually and keep an their own inventory list of what every number was. Some vendors would just put item number one for everything and put prices on things uh, if they didn't really feel like tracking their inventory. Uh, some vendors would uh, would use you know, a number one to represent clothes and a number five to represent, um, you know, some sort of hard goods. Or um, we, would, we would represent categories of items very often if we knew we were going to have a sale on a certain item, we'd, we'd uh, put a certain number on that. And then later on, if we had a, you know, if a certain order, for example, later on we wanted to have a sale on that, we'd just make the system automatically calculate a reduced price. There's a, a way to, in the system, to, in the system code to, uh, Put in any sort of sale, you know, from a certain date, from a certain vendor booth, from a, uh, including certain item numbers, and there's all sorts of. Uh, you can basically use any sort of logic that you want to automatically calculate price uh, pri price reductions. Um, this manual back barcode order is for. We had some vendors that wanted to print out, for example, thousands of, uh, of eyewear pieces. And they wanted that word instead of a number on their label. As long as that word's in the system. Um, and you can add words as, as you need. There are a couple thousand already in there for generic stuff. And this, for example, would add 150 labels that for booth 204 said eyewear at this price and 150 labels for that same booth, the same text at this price. And it should very quickly add uh, labels like that. Everything here is made to be uh, geared towards doing volume. We did, like I said, millions and millions of, uh, of sales at Merchants Village. You can bring up the employee notes at any time by clicking there. And this was just a little, every once in a while, we'd have a temp file that we wanted to delete. We'll use that little link to do it quickly. Uh, time clock is a, um, uh, has a screen here. So you can click on your name. And you don't have to use this, uh, this uh, camera, but we used it to make sure that no one was clocking in inappropriately for others. It asks if this information is correct. And then log in. And this way we could uh, keep track very, very quickly and easily of all of our employees checking in, checking out. And at the end of the week, we use paychecks. We have a little, little uh, report that um, allowed, allowed us to, uh, this again, allowed us to submit the reports that we had. Um, and about a minute to paychecks. So you can see I've got logged in and logged out at those times. It tells you the total number of hours and uh, 
again, you can work with these as you need it. It'll, it'll uh, show you all your employees and help you uh, import the paychecks in, in about a minute. Um, some of the other admin features here. Basically, you can look, you can adjust some of the items if you want to add, for example, different words to your list. We have all the numbers by default, one through five thousand, and then uh, there's a whole list here that we have of individual items. You can add some items if you want to add someone's unique description on the label. You can do that. And there's, there's some generic things that you know, people want to put this on uh, on their uh, labels. Nice to put that stuff on a label, but usually we use numbers. It's a lot faster to use numbers. Um, you can you can do a lot of things here with the system. There is some uh, there's a quick little calculator if you want to add a ton of uh, items really quickly without having to scan them. If you have things that, you know, for example, or have if vendors want to change their prices at the point of sale, you can you can do that very easily and just enter you know enter the number. Manually, and if you want to adjust that and add more, it brings up your, your previous prices. All these things again are are, are entered so that are made available so you can enter items really really quickly. Um, we we saw a couple thousand customers a week and and sold tens of thousands of items a week in Merchants Village, and um, this system can be run by a single person. Uh, it can be run, you know, by by groups all at the same time. You can have as many cash registers you can get a couple hundred cash registers going at the same time as many as will fit on one network you can run it over wireless um, but it's not secure any sort of point of sale system really should be attached to a wired network but you, this can handle the uh, we did run this you know for example if you're putting together an event and you want just to have a you know, wireless connection you can do that but uh, there are security concerns if you do that in those little notes here you can type in uh, Type in whatever you want here, and again you can add uh, name and phone number. We very rarely did that, but if we wanted, for example, to have a special event, um, we wanted to email the customers, we'd get their information up here, and that would be saved with the receipt. Um, and we could do searches, for example, for receipts that were sold to certain people. Uh, a lot of other features you can you can uh, put uh, the system on hold by just bringing bringing a uh, you know, if they if they order something and have to leave to get a credit card, you can. Bring up former uh, former receipts as necessary, um, and uh, and make changes to them. Um, also, if people want a receipt reprinted, very easy to do. Um, that's a basic outline of the the system. You know, you can you can do a lot more. There's an instruction uh, document here, instructions document, and Again, this is just a demo of the system, but you can uh, you can follow the instructions here to install it on a network. Uh, the download zip is available at uh, freeconsignmentsoftware.com, and this tells you how to do everything. There's some basic information here about how to operate the system, um, how we did our our check writing process. We had to write checks for several hundred people every week or every two weeks. You can do that however you want. You run this full report, and uh, we like to keep track of our checks a certain way. And these were some instructions about how we did it. But you can use this in a freeform way. Um, the reporting and everything is uh, all available in the code. You can write reports as needed. There's also an online system. There's an online component. We ran a, a little backup every uh, night. You'll see there's a folder here. Um, we automatically um, automatically updated every night by running this little backup script. There are some other scripts here. For example, we have a, a version of the barcode order or barcode ordering script that runs uh, remotely, so people could download it from a website, have their orders ready without having to sit there at a computer. In our location, they could have their orders, save it to a USB card, and or email it to us, and we'd have the orders printed and ready for them when they came in. Um, there's a uh, number of scripts here you can upload to your website to, so you can see what your total sales are and then there's a little password protected um, main script that lets users uh, um, check their sales so go here and we have it 
in this little receipts folder. And what happens is they type in their username and their password, which is set in, in the program. This is all set. I have to go out of the program at all. Um, you can enter, enter the information. So whatever they have set as their password here, that will work on the on the website. And if you can see here, and vendors check this. This was an enormous time saver for us. Vendors could check their sales without having to come up to us. We can give them their sales reports, but they usually just did this here. Shows when it was updated last. Tells what the current day is, and then you type in what you want to type in. Um, do the start date and the end date. And so for example, if we want to report in here, here you can get the entire the entire thing here. Um, Let's go on. Get this off the screen here so I can type it in. And I'll show you. And this is running now online on our on our website. And vendors use this. This is a huge time saver for the Merchants Village location. Um, it's running. And again, we were running reports on over 700,000 receipts there, so um, it's quite a bit of uh, data to go through, even online. Um, that little backup updates the website every day, and it looks like we're having. I've got a little internet connection. Uh, oh, guys. It's slowing down here because I've got a slow internet connection. But this is a place you can see it was an old Walmart building up in Pittston, PA. And it looks like my video software is slowing down the machine quite a bit. Um, and you can see some videos about operations and how we actually uh, how we actually ran. Um, and how big the place was, you get an idea of the volume that we handled. This can handle a, a mall, a, a large flea market, um, certainly any sort of retail store without any problem whatsoever. Everything's made, every every bit every, of the uh, program is made to work quickly. The majority of what happens in the software is scanning like this. People bring their items through um, and then vendors run their, run their reports. Um, print Printing barcodes is another big part of how, how the system works, or entering uh, uh, SKUs if you're using manual SKUs. Also, uh, the receipts for uh, for rentals are a big part of what happened. Um, and uh, you can see this is it's still processing here. Typically not that. Usually it's uh, fast. <laughs> It's running online, so it could be something at our web server right now. But that gives you a basic rundown of how the how the system works. If you have any questions, you can write uh, write me. My name is Nick Antonaccio. I'm the sole developer. Um, if you need training, uh, install help. Uh, if you need uh, any sort of customization done, if you want special reports done, you can reach me. There's a link here on the freeconsignmentsoftware.com website um, down at the bottom uh, all the information you need all the download links the full open source code is available you can write me at software at merchantsvillage.com or call leave a message at this number 570-891-1972 um, and I can give you help as needed I don't offer any free support I can't offer you free installation help um, but I do have uh, uh, I usually do a, a free uh, initial consultation if you want um, customization work done or if you need commercial support packages. My normal rate is $50 an hour with a half hour minimum, um, but I do offer special rates for um, for contract uh, support and make it easy to, to get good commercial support and good help. I've been doing this for uh, several decades and I've worked with some of the biggest places in the, in the country. Merchants Village itself was one of the biggest consignment um, operations in the US and uh, you'll see in my history if you look me up I've got some information on the uh, 
on the Merchants Village website about things that I've done. I've done a lot of commercial software development in my uh, my group. I, I use Rebel to develop. Um, I was the Rebel of the Year in 2010. I've written a number of other software packages for a number of other big uh, big commercial operations and lots and small mom and pop operations. So I can give you help quickly. I know the consignment business very very well. I've been in it for about 20 years. So if you have any questions, you can reach me again at that that phone number. Five seven zero eight nine one one nine seven two, or drop me an email at uh, uh, softwaremerchantsvillage.com, and all that information is on the homepage.